It's time to get down to business on TK Business Live, brought to you by the members of the Topeka Independent Business Association. Now, let's join Tara Dimmick, owner and publisher of TK Business Magazine, as we take a look into the business world of Topeka, Kansas. Hi, welcome to TK Business Live. I'm Tara Demick, and it's great to be with you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. It's a great day. Uh, and I hope you're spending it with family, and I, I'm happy if you're listening. If not, check it out on YouTube. It's going to be a great um, show. I get to have Lisa Lowen join me. She's my editor-in-chief, one of my favorite people in the world, and so um, that makes me happy, of course. Um, but I also wanted to get a chance, uh, since I've I've kind of got a a few less people to ask to come in on Christmas. Um, wanted to share with you what, what we talked about in TK Business Magazine with Lisa. And then I also kind of wanted just to pass along what my publisher page was about. And so this this uh, issue, we talked about directional living. And so one of the big changes in my life has been to join up and be a um, an employee, right? That's really the biggest change is to go from a, a business owner to employee. It's a really I didn't know how it would go, but it's been wonderful. Investor Credit Union is where I'm at. Um, I'm a senior vice president of business development. It's been a phenomenal place, great culture. We work hard during the day and we play hard at night. It's it's just been awesome. Every day I get there and people are ready to be at work and they're happy to be there and they're happy to see each other and they really enjoy each other's company. And at the same time, we get to do great work. Um, we get to help. We get to help people and businesses. You know, work their money, do the best they can, grow their money. Find ways to grow their business. Find ways to, you know, make their money work for them. It's it's awesome. It's exactly what I want to be able to do for businesses. Is how do we make our money work for us and make it work better than if we don't have that consultative relationship with our financial institution? So come see me over at Investor Credit Union if you uh, want to just chat or or hang out for a little bit. But it really came down to uh, the writing a publisher's page. As I was writing it, I kind of took a, a leap of faith and wrote something pretty personal for me. Um, but really it comes down to, you know, I've always been a goal setter. I really, I mean, if you saw some of the pages I've written of goals and here's what I'm going to achieve and here's what I'm going to do. But a few years back, what happened really changed all of that for me. And and it really came down to, I had gotten, I'd been working really hard. We'd grown the business and we, as an I, um, I had just really gotten to a point where I was uh, growing to the point where employees were starting to be an option and I was hiring people. And we were expanding and someone had nominated nominated me for an award and I was so excited about it. And it was kind of that ad girl I'd been looking for and wanting and went through everything. They had provided us seats so that I could share the event with my family. And, you know, fast forward to the day of the event, uh, I had been working a lot and I wasn't around. And uh, when I got to the event, I had forgotten about those additional chairs and who all I was supposed to bring with me. And so as I accepted the award, what I ended up getting to do was stare at, you know, it was three chairs at the time, uh, three chairs because my youngest wasn't born yet. And those three chairs were empty because I had completely forgotten to invite them. Uh, I It wasn't even like I had, uh, they were mad at me or anything. They were, they were supportive of me. They were okay with the fact that I was trying to grow the business and we had our bumps and bruises through all that. But they were supportive and yet I was too busy and I had set goals and I was focusing on those that I didn't even invite them to the one thing that the only people in that audience that I really cared about to celebrate with me were not there. And it was all my fault. And uh, in that experience, what I realized was that I had something off. Uh, This was great. I really wanted to grow. I wanted to have this blossoming business, but not in the process was I going to lose the things that mattered the most, the reason I was doing it, right? The reason I was doing all of this in my mind, the thing I had created the th- that I told myself was that I was doing this for my family. Yeah, I was tearing my family apart, forgetting about them in the process of reaching my goals. And so it shifted me and it really made me start to think about the why I was doing things and the impact that I wanted to make and who I wanted to make sure was by my side at the end of it all and what the end looked like for me. And, you know, somebody asked me one time to describe, well, what does it look like? So when you're, when you're at the end, what does it look like? And, you know, when I described that person, who y'all might laugh at me, but I described that person as someone who, when I'm at my house, people feel comfortable just coming over and saying hi. And, you know, we have a kitchen full of family and, and we're, we're laughing and telling good stories to each other and sharing in life. And yet that was not how I was living because I had set goals to achieve so it, it created some disconnect for me and it created a change that was, was much needed. Um, 
And so, so I still set goals and I still develop strategies for, for the work, for the work of the business, um, for the work that I'm doing with Invista, for the work that, that TK does. But I made a shift and I, and I call it directional living where it's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's just living. Um, it's, it's creating a process where you become comfortable with uncertainty. And so that's, that's been a long road. Um, I like to know what I'm doing. I like to know what the plan is and I do not like uncertainty. But getting comfortable with uncertainty and getting comfortable with a mess a little bit and some chaos um, and not trying to control everything has been a powerful um, tool. It's made me accept uh, what I can't change. And it's also made me uh, be more engaged with people and allow them to be creative and, and give them more ownership. Um, another thing that it's not in here, but it's it's been a part of my coaching, uh, both I, I get coached and I coach. And part of that process has been... Um, looking at people and really not just not just saying the words but really truly meaning when i look at someone i think that person is whole and they are complete and they are capable of solving any and all of their problems and if i am there in their life i'm there to be a support but i'm not there to do their work and that has been a powerful change for me as well it's made me see people as valuable not that I didn't see him as valuable before, but truly valuable, truly capable, truly strong, and that I'm there to help support them, to help be there for them. And um, it's been it's been a, a hard, it's, it's been over five years, which is why my littlest one wasn't in the picture at the time, but the transformation has been powerful and it's been, um, it's really probably led me to this point to saying yes to joining the Invista team, to wanting to be around a culture that is supportive of each other, that engages each other, that that wants to grow and that wants to provide great services and products to the people that they serve. So my challenge to you, and I and this is kind of where I, where I, I try to do in the, the publisher page without being annoying, right, is uh, to challenge you to enjoy the journey and to know what you want and what does that picture look like? You know, for some, it is, it, it's totally about having a, a yacht or, or a, this house of their dreams, or maybe it's a beach house. Uh, but, but it's also about how do you want to be living? What is, what is it? How do you show up? Um, who's the people, who's the person you are to other people? How do you want other people to perceive you? And once you start really getting a clear vision of that, then you become that, right? Because you have to, if you don't become it, then nobody's ever going to perceive you that way. Nobody's ever going to to know how much you care about them if you don't start that process of, of engaging in what you want the experience of your life to be. So I, I hope that you know you have a wonderful Christmas and you you think about what is it that you want for your world? What is it for you you want for the people that you care most about? And I think as a business owner, it's one of the most challenging pieces, right? Because you're thinking about that, you care about that, and you're not even, you, you remember that's why Maybe you started this business, you know, you were, you were thinking, I can do this. I can do this for me. I can do this for my family. I can make a change. I can be free. And then all of a sudden you get into it and you're no longer free and the focus is gone. You, you, you forget why you really are doing it. And I think when you come back to that and you start reminding yourself of who you want to be as a human, man, what can happen is so wonderful. So I, I wish that for you. I hope that for you. I hope you consider that. Um, and we'll go talk to Lisa. My name is Jennifer Kermis, Vice President of Business Development with the Jura Credit Union. TIBA is advice and support. TIBA is information and education. TIBA is a voice for small businesses. My biggest advantage would be being able to network and get to know who all of the members are of TIBA and how their businesses operate, what the different needs are for their business, and really get to understand the different business opportunities that are out there in Topeka. The Topeka Independent Business Association is strong because of its members. Become a member today by visiting TopekaTIBA.org. I have Lisa Lowen joining me. She is the editor-in-chief of TK Business Magazine. How are you, Lisa? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, we released the the winter issue, gosh, over a month ago, but really, but um, we haven't got a chance to talk. So we had a a lot of buy local campaigns and a lot of conversations about that over the last couple of months. So we've spent our time talking about that on the radio show. So even though it's late, I wanted to bring you on and get a chance to really go through the magazine and talk about some of the behind the scenes as, as well as just talking about some of these articles and why we chose them and, and just give you a little sneak peek behind our, our brains and what we're doing with TK. So uh, this one is our winter issue. So it's always top top 20 under 40. Uh, so what do you got to say about that, the top 20 under 40? Well, I think we had, we always have a really good class of people that are picked and i'm always surprised sometimes by the names that actually get chosen 
But when you go back and you start to unravel the stories and you look at the letters that come with them and you look at what all of these people do, whether it's at their own business or whether it's out in the community, then all those little pieces start to fall into place and you're like, okay, yeah, I totally get why that person deserves to have that honor. And so if you don't know who those people are, if you haven't had a chance to kind of look and see who got honored this year, pick up the magazine. We've done a little profile on each one of them. It gives you a little bit of background about who they are, what they care about, what they're doing both in business and in the community to just kind of give you a glimpse of who they are as individuals and business people. Yeah, and one of the decisions we made this year that was a little different than we've done in the past, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually really curious. So if you want to uh, Facebook me or, or message me through Facebook or, or Twitter or, or even through email, just Tara at TKMagazine.com, what I'm curious about is if you are a follower of TK and um, and you've read the past ones, this time we really decided that we wanted to focus in on who they were and why they were selected, trying to give you kind of a, a, a real look at them and who they are as a, as a person and, and why that was they were selected. Where in the past, we've used that space to give a kind of a, a look at, at who their personality is. And this was a really hard decision for me because personally, I really love the personality side of it, but we couldn't go there because we were, uh, if you went there, we missed out on telling the story behind, you know, what they do. But then it kind of becomes like a, almost like a resume instead of what we want is where you kind of know who this person is. Yeah, that's why you kind of have to go read each piece for yourself. And can we put everything in there? Of course not. No. There's just lots of things. They're involved in so many organizations. They volunteer all over the place. They they're on sit on numerous boards. They do all kinds of things that we don't have the space to actually cover. So what we're giving you is just a little snippet into who that person is. Yeah, and we always, you know, you mentioned it. We always get called out on this. We we don't choose who is the 20 under 40. It's done by the Jayhawk Area Council Boy Scouts. And the process they go through is something we fully support. So they uh, have nominations. They have hundreds of nominations come in. And then from there, those nominations go out to those, those people for them to choose whether they want to uh, submit an application. Uh, they get you know, usually at least 100 applications back, maybe a little somewhere between 80 and 100. And then from there, those those applications that come back are then um, go, they go out to a selection committee to be reduced and to be scored. But then they still all go to the second selection committee to be vetted. And so we're talking, I, I think, 20 some odd people are part of these different selection committees. It, it's, it's not taken lightly by the people who are selecting the 20. Well, in the application process itself, it asks a lot of questions, not only about what, what they're doing in business, but what they're doing in the community and how they're giving back and how they're serving. It also requires them to submit letters of recommendation from other members of the community in the business community or or uh, people who are advocates for community efforts. And so it's not just a, this is what I do. This is a, a complete picture of this is what I do, but then someone else has to talk about why that's important as well. Yeah, yeah. We should definitely be proud that we have it. Year after year, I think this is the sixth year, had 20 individuals that have, are truly going above and beyond the call of duty, um, a, a new set of 20 each and every year. So the other article that kind of matched this, and, and in some ways it's it's our counter to not having a 40 over 40 or 20 over 40 or something like that. It's my rebellion for being older than 40. <laughs> It's Lisa's Rebellion, and it's called. we call it the door openers, and there's a reason we call it the door openers. you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, we, when Tara and I were talking about this class of 20 under 40 and, and actually how the selection works and all of that, we our discussion involved the fact that most of the time, a young person's success is, sometimes it can be completely attributed to themselves, but a lot of times it is someone else who is mentoring, who is opening the door, who is introducing you to the right people, who is encouraging you to join organizations to network who's who's basically clearing the path for you to be successful and we wanted to acknowledge that we wanted to say yes these these young people are fabulous they're doing great things but guess what there's some people that's maybe helping them get there yeah so we wanted to acknowledge that yeah and i think uh this was a we did this uh man it was like four or five years ago we did this uh and i was really nervous that we'd get like the exact same group when we did this and we really we did get a couple that came back i think jake hewitt was one of those ones that was on it uh last year or last what four or five years ago uh that was called out maybe he was the only one i don't know there might have been one more in that group i feel like oh i, I don't know that might have been it but um the group that came in it was people who had really inspired the 20 under 40. So Lisa, how did you get to this door opener group? Well, what we decided was because there's so many people who could be called door openers in the Topeka area. So we narrowed it to who the 20 under 40 winners thought who they said had opened doors for them. So we sent out a request all going all the way back for the past six years to anybody who had been um, recognized as a top 20 under 40. 
and just asked, in, in your career, who, when you look back, who would you have considered somebody who helped you on your career path, opened that door for you? And got some some very interesting responses. A lot of the, a lot, if you will look and you kind of dive in, a lot of the people are from names from the last couple of years of 20 under 40 yeah. nominees. Yeah, there, there, there was David Callanan, which was a 20 under 40. Um, and Paul Bothert, which was a 20 under 40. Um, and so you look at some of those, and, and even a few of them, I, I was very proud to be selected. I, I really stay away from articles, but when this one came about, and uh, Lisa Staley and nominated, she was the one who uh, nominated me, and, and I was honored to be a part of some, someone. If somebody's saying, you helped guide me or open a door and maybe, maybe give me that push to go through the door, I definitely was um, humbled and honored to be able to have some one person say that about me. That that's a huge. I think that's what we. I I don't know. I think that's what we all aspire to be is that person who can help. I I hope so. If we're all doing that, wow, what a different world we'd have. Well, the this article is not really an article. It's just kind of a, again, it's it's noting who they are. It's it's a quote from the person who nominated them. It's a quote from the individual that's considered to be a door opener on why that's important. But what I found really interesting was what we did not print was it, uh, the same questionnaire that asked who they would have considered a door opener for them. Who do they think was going to be the next door opener 10 years down the mm-hmm. road? And almost every single one of them came back and said, I hope it's me. Oh, that's really cool. That's Which really if that's cool. true, that's awesome. Right. Because that means they're going to be doing it. They're going to be doing it because someday they want to be named as a door opener. Because that's, I mean, that, that says you've, you've accomplished something so that you can push a door open, right? But it also means that you're willing to give it back. Exactly. All right. So keep moving through this. So incentivizing business was one that um, Kathy Weber wrote for us. And it's a really important article. And I think what's important about it is we tell the story of 2016. And and basically what it's talking about is this incentive that was created out of Go Topeka, where it's a um, $150,000 of grant dollars were created for small businesses to take advantage of so that they could use it to improve their business, buy equipment, um, help their staff get trained, things that things that small businesses want to do, but maybe they can't do because the dollars aren't there to support them. And so this this program allows them to receive some grant funding as long as they're also paying the matching amount. And what what was most important to me though, and Lisa, you might have something different, was that this this uh, uh, grant, this incentive program, will be continuing. So in 2017, we're going to see this, but we're going to see a $250,000 worth of grant dollars be available to small businesses. So really if you are a small business and you're you're thinking about this it's it's a chance that you can take to go and grow your business when maybe you were thinking you couldn't um and and go talk to glenda washington over at the entrepreneurial and minority business development program over there with go topeka and let her know that you're interested so she's so she's talking to you well we found out when we talked to glenda about these incentives was that once people became aware that the matching dollars were available they submitted they applications for I mean, I think the money was allocated within 30 days. Yeah. So there is a huge demand for this. If if small businesses can take advantage of some matching dollars and, you know, basically the way the program works is that if you spend, if you decide you need to spend $10,000 to make improvements to your existing building, you can apply for the, a matching grant. So you spend five and they'll reimburse you five. Same thing. If you, if you need some new equipment, for instance, um, the uh i think prairie glass. prairie glass needed a new kiln in order to be able to upgrade some of the quality of the artwork they were putting out and that grant allowed them to actually purchase that kiln that would let them produce even more uh, higher quality glass artwork over there well and i love what kim ledbetter says she says owning your business is challenging things always come up that you don't expect and when you get a gift like this it's just amazing and i'm so grateful for that and you know what was said by shockwave is uh shockwave electric electric uh, Sarah said over there that, you know, they'd been wanting to take a class for a while because po- one of the incentive options is is an employee uh, training. And so they'd been wanting to take a class for a while. And she says, well, we, we are just a small business and it's a price of class and this made it possible. And so really that's what it is, right? It's those things that are on the, we need to be doing this. If we're going to move to the next level, we've got to do this. We've got to fix this. We've got to renovate that. We've got to have this piece of equipment, but I can't get the funding. So this for a lot of, some of that. For a lot of small businesses, trying to come up with with ten thousand dollars to put a new roof on your building can seem astronomical. Yeah, yeah. But but a, a financial institution is going to be interested in being part of a loan when they already know that half of that is matched. Exactly. It makes a big big difference in in even having the conversation 
with a financial institution if it's not just cash available. All right. So talking about small businesses, one of the articles that I really enjoyed, Kim Groniger wrote, um, and she talked about, um, trying to get there, it's called Making a Connection. And it's talking about Cindy Hopper uh, and Dan Brumgart. They're the new co-owners of Kitchen Gallery. So talk a little bit about this story. Well, if, if you're like me, one of the whole reasons that you go into Fairlawn Plaza was to go into Kitchen Gallery because there just wasn't really another store like that in Topeka. You could go in, unique kitchen gadgets, you could buy tea, you could buy baking mixes, all kinds of things. So when I heard that that um, store was going to be closing, I was almost in a panic. <laughs> well, fortunately, the... Um, the uh, I'm sorry. The new owners decided that they were going to keep it open because they knew a lot of people felt the same way I did. Yeah. So you've got you have got basically Paul Grun- Grunhart who owns the um, home yep. decor store in Fairlawn that is the um, home at last store, which offers a lot of eclectic home decorating type items that are very affordable for people. He felt like that owning the kitchen gallery would be kind of a nice complement to his existing clientele. As did Cindy Hopper, who owns Sweet. And if you've been in there, that's all the baking supplies for making the cupcakes and the candy and all of that. And so they both saw this opportunity, even though they have existing businesses that take up their time and effort there in Fairlawn, that it was worth their while to keep Kitchen Gallery open as a complimentary business to both of their business clientele. Yeah, I think if you haven't been over there, it's really worth going over there and checking out Kitchen Gallery, Suite, and Home at Last. Because really, it's, it's you know, there's, there's little areas like that where you can go and you get to hit everything you need, especially, you know, whether it's for gifts or, or one of the things that I think was really cool about Kitchen Gallery. And I know Sweet does it too, where they have cooking classes, but Kitchen Gallery is really going to specialize mm-hmm. in also helping people get back into the kitchen, right? We, we've busied our lives up. And so now we're not getting back in the kitchen like we should. We're not teaching the, the art of cooking to our family members and passing that down. And so they're helping that process by creating some really cool uh, cooking classes. Well, and the whole the whole premise behind the business really is this whole idea of making a connection and people connect over food yeah. and people connect over socializing. And so their their idea is let's bring people together. Let's make a connection. Let's do it in a nice, warm, welcoming environment that we call our homes. And let's teach people to make great tasting food in so, in a, and put them in an environment where they want to share it with other people. Yeah. And another article that Krim Groninger wrote was called Beyond Business. And, and the, the, you know, we, when we plan out these articles, we have all these conversations behind the scenes about what we're trying to do and how we want the reader to experience and, and what we want them to hear from from this this article. And this one is, is this one had so much conversation. I can't even explain how much conversation went behind the scenes on this because what makes this special, and I, I don't, you know, we, we try with an article, but that's only so many pages. But what makes it so special is you've got these business owners who love what they do so much and they have such a heart for it that they're going to do something even more and they'll do it as a nonprofit just to do it, just to give back to the community, just to share the love they have, just to pass it on, just to make it stronger, make it bigger. And it really, sometimes it reflects on the business, but a lot of times they're just doing it because this is what they're passionate about and they have the opportunity because of the business to maybe pass it through with a nonprofit. And both uh, the historic Harley-Davidson of Topeka with the Evil Knievel Thrill Show and Museum that they're working on right now, if you've been over to their building or anywhere near them, you see how much trans- transformation is happening on that backside of the building as, as the museum's going up. And then for Kansas Ballet Academy, uh, you know, they've created this Access for the Arts pilot program. But more than that, they are they have a foundation and they really are trying to grow a program yeah, that will will keep dance in our community, grow dance in our community, and grow the love and the artistic form of dance in our community as well. Well, most people they don't associate Topeka with <laughs> right with dance culture, with fine arts. I mean, we're getting better, and we're starting to get people are starting to recognize we have a lot. We have a vibrant arts community here. We've got a lot of theater, performing arts. So their whole goal is to put Topeka, Kansas, on the map as a premier dance center in the United States. Yeah, and, they, and they're doing a great job. And it's kind of interesting that it's not because we have some amazing dancers coming out of Topeka, Kansas. Yes. I mean, it's pretty amazing what we've created and the studios that we have here. I mean, Kansas Ballet is, is, is an incredible studio. And um, Alex Smirnoff has come, come here and uh, he has been amazing. And his wife, Stephanie, Stephanie's from Topeka. And she has been amazing to addition. But there's also, in addition to that, other amazing studios, Dance Factor, Radiant, all these 
uh, uh, Ballet Midwest. Ballet Midwest. Heck, Lacey's in the in the magazine as a twenty under forty. I mean, what they do to shape uh, a young person's life. How many hours? How many hours does your daughter dance a week? In class or just total? Because she dances <laughs> twenty four hours a day, every day. No, she's probably in dance 10 to 15 hours a week. Yeah, so you look at these students, these dancers, and, and my daughter was a gymnast, and, and when you're spending that many hours with a, a child, you are shaping them. You are defining who they will be and who they will become. And as a parent, we really have to make smart choices with who we allow our child to be surrounded by and guided by as they're moving through in the future. And you know, when I look at things like Kansas Ballet, that's what I'm looking at. They're shaping our young people, uh, Ballet Midwest, they're shaping our young people to be some amazing, amazing adults. Um, and I, I hope that's what, what shines through in that. Any last thoughts about the magazine, the winter issue, or, or maybe we should talk a teaser of the next issue, but I don't want you to tell too much. <laughs> well, Once I just, get started, I just tell feel like I can, I got the inside scoop. <laughs> uh, I just feel like that TK business is working really hard. We're just getting, I think better and better. We're covering more businesses. We're trying to find those unique stories. We're trying to cover business that maybe people haven't really been talking too much about, not the obvious players. And so uh, all I'm going to say is kind of a pitch out there that if you know somebody who's just doing something really interesting or doing something awesome for the community with their business or starting a new business, get a hold of TK. Send us an email and give us a heads up. And maybe it's something that we will decide, hey, you know, that is awesome. We should be covering that. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And and just to kind of let you know, I guess our we, we've added it to our bind uh, our, our our bound uh, side now. But um, the th four areas that we really focus on and, and why we focus them on real quick is is grow, innovate, inspire, and lead. And and what we're looking at is, you know, what businesses are growing and how are they growing? What businesses are doing something innovative? Are they, you know, maybe it's not just an innovative product, it's an innovative process or system or the way they treat their, their employees or maybe how they give up, give back to the community. The Inspire really is all about that heart of the entrepreneur, the, the, the story about why they do what they do, the passion that lies into the work they do and why they show up every single day, day in and day out. Some days not even taking a paycheck to do what they have loved to do and to, to inspire someone else to take that jump and to grow their business as well and create a business. And then lead is really about, it, it, for me, lead goes back and I'm not sure, Lisa might have a different thought on lead because uh, lead goes back to when I first took over TK, one of my biggest, I don't know, I guess it would be called a pet peeve about T Topeka was that everybody thought the experts were somewhere else. And I just didn't get it. There are people around Topeka that are being hired by all over the country because they're such great experts, yet they can't get hired in, in Topeka because they're not seen as an expert. And I, I just, man, I couldn't wrap my hands around that. And, you know, there's that philosophy, just get 20 minutes outside of your house and you become a, or outside of your town and you become an expert. And I really don't want that for our community. I want us to, you know, Matt Pavarnik said, you know, if we would just take each company would bring 3% of their, their outsourced um, out of the city, out of the state even, uh, vendors and bring them into our community, what a impact that would make for our community if we just accepted that we have the experts right here. Right. And you know what? You may have a fabulous expert that is working at a home office. Right. That doesn't make them any less capable or, you know, affordable. Right. They're right here, right available for you. So, all right. So make sure you go and check out the the winter issue. It's at tkmagazine.com. There's still some, some magazines available. I, I think we did a check just to see if there was any left. The Dillons are pretty well taken. Maybe, maybe high V. Um, a lot of our advertisers might have a couple still sitting around. I saw some at, at the radio station here today. Uh, but uh, Westridge Mall usually is the one to get if you want the print issue. Otherwise, go to tkmagazine.com and grab your, or, and then you can look at the online issue. We also have all the articles in our news feed. So if you want to pick those, you know, pick those out individually. And if you have some news, maybe it's just a news release. Maybe it's an employee doing something great. Maybe it's a, an award or some growth you're having. Send it to us. You can send it to uh, myself, Tara at tkmagazine.com or Braden, B-R-A-D-E-N at tkmagazine.com. And we will get that on our newsfeed and out through our social media because it's really important to us to, to share the news that's happening in our community for our businesses. Any last thoughts, Lisa? Go get the magazine. <laughs> Better do it today because you might not find one. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Lisa. Thanks so much for joining us on TK Business Live. Have a wonderful Christmas day.
Thanks for joining Tara and her guests on TK Business Live. Join us again next Sunday at 1130 to hear more from our community business leaders, entrepreneurs, and people making a difference in the landscape of how business is progressively moving forward in Topeka. TK Business Live is brought to you by the members of the Topeka Independent Business Association.